Hello everyone, welcome to Practical GCP. So today I'll cover a topic on a very recent release on a new feature just been added to Analytics Hub. So now you can use Analytics Hub to share PubSub topics uh, between projects. So this is actually going to make sharing streaming data a lot easier, especially for large organizations. So first of all, I'll talk about the two topics. One is on uh, Analytics Hub itself. Uh, this is in relation to one of the videos I created before. And then I'll talk about the multi-team design on Cloud PubSub, which is another video I released uh, quite a back a while ago. Uh, the reason for covering those two first is because these two are most relevant to the issues uh, I want to tackle in here. So obviously, uh, you know, from my point of view, I'll talk about the issues, why sharing streaming data has been quite problematic in the past, especially in with large teams and in large organizations. And then what the analytics hub way looks like and how does that solve this problem specifically? As usual, uh, I'll show a quick demo on what I've tried uh, just to make sure this feature kind of works or what is current status in the demo. Um, and then uh, finally, we'll do a bit of a summary to cover what we talked about today. Right, so this first one uh, is a, I've actually linked these image with the YouTube channel. So once I put this slide public, you can actually go there and find it. Um, this is the last video I talked about uh, on how to use Analytics Hub to centralize data sharing. So this is specifically to do with BigQuery and the examples I've given in here. Uh, so as you can see, I'm not going to talk the details in here. Uh, you can look at the video yourself. Um, but this is basically about creating exchange and listings to create boundaries, regardless of which project uh, you're in or which team you're in, uh, you can easily create clear boundaries to share data between publishers and subscribers. Um, so this makes data sharing very easy to manage. And the multi-team design on Cloud PubSub is a topic I talked about uh, in the sense of where you have like project A, um, you have a PubSub topic. And typically when you want to share this topic with project B, there's kind of various ways of doing it. The way I described in this particular video uh, is about how to allow the downstream teams, in this particular case, the project team B, to create their own subscribers. Uh, so this is a very powerful way, like in design, in the, even without Analytics Hub, uh, the new feature has been added, that you, you kind of have the, um, it's kind of like the, the, the Kafka site, you kind of basically just have a topic and you allow many subscribers to do their own things uh, in the Google Cloud world. So, but there are some issues. So if you look at some of the typical issues with sharing streaming data, and uh, specifically in this case with uh, PubSub, is that uh, if you look at the project A in this case, I kind of slightly over complicated the situation a little bit. So you have the GCP project A, you have producers sending data to your PubSub topic, and then you share let's say you share this topic with uh, project team B and team C and team D all doing their own things, right? The issue with this is if you allow uh, team B, team C and team D to create their own subscriptions, which is the recommended approach I uh, put in the video uh, in the previous slide. And this is because it's just a lot easier for the downstream uh, teams to decide uh, their technology stack. So for example, if you get the, the, the team A to create all of this stuff, they may not necessarily understand what you're doing. So for example, if you're creating a push subscription in this particular case, this has nothing to do with the upstream teams. So the push subscription allows you, the team to, let's say, create a cloud run service to um, privately push every single message via HTTPS into your cloud run APIs, right? So this is a very powerful approach. Um, but the, the, the topic, whoever produced the topic would not know why you want to do that or even able to understand or create this for you, right? So other use cases such as the BigQuery subscription, which has been added kind of probably more than a year ago. Um, if you have data in the subscription and if you create the Google managed uh, PubSub subscription for BigQuery, 
and you'll be automatically be able to stream data into BigQuery in almost real time, right? So those are the strong benefits of why it is important to have downstream teams to have the control to create their own subscriptions. However, there's a problem. If you look at the red bit, what I said in there is subscribers are invisible. So what I mean by that is the subscribers are kind of invisible to the publisher because this kind of subscription, as soon as you, let's say you give the downstream teams, the team B, team C or team D, um, the permission, right? In this case is the pub sub subscriber permission. They, they can create as many as permission, uh, as many as they want, right? And then you, you don't really know how many they've created and there's no easy way to manage that. Sure, you can probably extract the, the, the infrastructure the logs and try to kind of understand who is doing what, but it's somewhat difficult, right? This brings us to the topic of why Analytics Hub uh, is very powerful in this case. Um, as we all know, Analytics Hub is already very powerful for sharing data, particularly with BigQuery, with the tables. It, it does it by creating exchange and listings, and uh, and then the subscribers can create something called a linked data set to, uh, without duplicating data, and then can subscribe and easily consume data from the uh, publishers. So in this particular case, it is very, very similar. So you can see from comparing to the previous uh, diagram and this one, all I've done is I've added analytics hubs in the middle. So there's something interesting things in here. So it might look like a very simple step in the middle, but this has fundamentally changed a lot of things. So as you can see, you still have the pub sub topic, but within analytics hub, what happens now is with, within an exchange, uh, you have a listing A, right? So cr you created a listing and then within the listing, uh, you've actually added your your published your pub sub topic, right? So before you just had a topic, you kind of you haven't specifically published it somewhere that can be listed for other people to find it. So this is the key difference here. So now you've published your pub sub topic, and it now allows um, team B, team C, and team D to transparently transparently attach or subscribe to this topic. So now in this case, uh, each one of these teams can create their own subscriptions, but because you have Analytics Hub in here, now the whole process or even who is now consuming from this topic, who has created their subscribers, what kind of subscribers they are, they're all visible within Analytics Hub. So this is the key difference that why you would want to care about this new features that just been added. So. Without further ado, let's look at what it looks like, right? Actually in the publishing and subscribing um, in the actual Analytics Hub itself, right? So let's go here. So the setup I have here is just to simulate what it would look like in, in a large organization, right? So you, you, you have, I have Sandbox at one, and I also have Sandbox two, right? And then I have some data in here in BigQuery that I can show you the subscription because I, of course I didn't have to try to make sure it works, right? Because it's still in private review. So I want to make sure it does work. And then um, if it doesn't, then there are issues, then I can feed it back to the Google uh, Cloud team. So now, first of all, I've created a uh, exchange. So this exchange is within this project, uh, Sandbox One, right? Within the Europe S2 region, which is London. So you can see I've got one listing in here. I've got exchange, and if I click into that, so what's happening here is I've got the listing with a displayed name of streaming demo publisher topic. And this topic um, is an asset type of topic. You can see this is actually not like a BigQuery data set anymore. This is a, a topic. Right, now, one of the most uh, useful things, like what I said uh, earlier, is this tab here. So within subscriptions, you can see, if you look at this thing here, right? All of these other subscriptions I've either added or um, uh, activated or made inactive. So you can see here what's happening is you've got these first two are actually inactive because I've actually revoked them. So here you can, you can as a publisher, you can easily revoke your subscriptions from, from here, right? And you can also see uh, where it's actually active, right? 
So you can, you can see like where is actually active, where is actually inactive. So this is very important because you can see um, exactly who the subscribers are, you know, who subscribes to it, which service account and or what um, uh, subscribers from uh, which projects, sorry. Th these would give you sufficient information on uh, how things have been used, right? Uh, if you go to the subscription side, I've actually created two. Um, so keep in mind, this is very important, right? So what, let me let me let me do this first. So if I'm in Sandbox Two, right? Uh, so forget forget about this page for a second. If I'm in Sandbox Two, I go to the uh, Analytics Hub page, right? So what I want to do now is could go search in the listing. So let's say you know I can see this this thing here, right? If I go to listing and then go to private. And what happens here is I can find the streaming demo publisher topic, which is just like the BigQuery dataset, right? There's nothing different here. However, when you click on it, and if you click on subscribe, this is where things is quite different. So when you're subscribing a BigQuery dataset, it's just creating a link, right? But you can see here, this is fundamentally different this is still creating a subscription. So there's not changed, right? It's not changed in the sense of it just doesn't even need to create a subscription anymore. That's not true. It still creates a subscription. So assume you are now the subscriber, right? You're in project, you know, B or C or D. Now you can create a pool subscription, the push subscription, right to BigQuery, you can do all of this stuff. Once you've actually done this, right, you would create the subscriptions in your own project. But the way you're doing this is quite different is because you're subscribing it via Analytics Hub, right? So the permission you get, you can actually look at uh, this page later on, which tells you exactly what permissions you need in terms of uh, if you're admin, if you're publisher, if you're subscriber. Um, but the, the key thing in here is don't forget you're actually creating a resource, a infrastructure, which is still a subscription that runs on your, um, on your uh, subs on your subscriber project. Why do I emphasize this, emphasize this a lot? Is because um, if you're creating a linked data linked data set, right? Let's say a linked data set. Although um, it, because it's kind of a link that you goes to your original data set on BigQuery to consume your data, right? But let's say if you deleted your linked data set, it's not a big deal. You just put it back nothing's lost. However, with the with the subscriptions here, that is quite different. Let's say you've created two subscriptions in, in here, right? And then for some reason, you just deleted from the UI accidentally. But in that case, what you, what's going to happen to you is you lose all the data because the topic will keep sending data. But if you deleted your subscription and once you've recreated your subscription, you just lost all of that data in between, right? So this is something you need to be very, very careful with. It's not the same as a big query data set, which just a link. In this case, it is infrastructure, right? So it's very, very important you understand this. And then this is also why I think it's important to use version control, to use Terraform when you're creating this kind of resource. So it's not accidentally, you, know, you, don't, you don't manage this in the user interface. However, uh, I, I can't remember if I actually mentioned this, for BigQuery, um, I think you could actually scale it as a self-service model using the user interface because when you have a lot of analysts, when you have a lot of, uh, let's say, hundreds of people uh, dealing with data sharing in BigQuery, using version control, it can be quite problematic, right? And also because of that link to data set, doesn't do much of a damage. That's why you can do that. But with this, because you have infrastructure, it is quite dangerous if you just all do this in the user interface. Uh, even you can, right? So that's kind of what I'm, uh, what I'm kind of emphasizing on, and it's important to understand. So you can see here, I've created two of these. One is right to BigQuery, one is the proof subscription. So what I'm going to show you, just to make sure it, you know it works, is I have uh, some sample code on producer to basically generate some UID for, and then some random content. If I'm running this, it's going to start pumping message into the topic, right? So on one side, I have a consumer. This is just a uh, a consumer I'm attaching to this uh, demo subscription pool consumer. Uh, when I run this, I'm expecting to 
see the message coming through, which is correct, right? You can see this is just message keep pumping through. On the other side, if I'm going to my BigQuery thing, uh, if I just do a search on my streaming table one, this is the one I set up uh, yesterday. So you can see this is also coming through uh, as we speak now um, in almost real time, right? So that uh, I've only tested this two um, subscriptions, which works perfectly fine. I don't really see any issues, although it, it is in private review. So use it with caution, uh, but I don't really see anything isn't working. Um, right. Uh, okay, let me just kill that worker so it doesn't keep producing messages forever. Right, back to the slide. Um, summary. Right, so two things on the, the where this is, in my view, very, very useful to you. Um, it makes it very, very easy to share pops up topic uh, with very clear boundaries. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, before with, especially with a multi-team design, right? In a large organization, very often you have pops up topics uh, located in different software engineering teams in kind of, you know, when people sending their data, collect their web events, they could be collecting things from database. They could have a, you know, CDC solutions. A lot of these things can go into different pops up topics. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because you don't have the single point of failure or everything comes from one team, right? But it is important that everyone would be able to, in a way, um, easily manage the publishing of those data asset and then subscribing to those data asset with a clear transparent um, boundaries, which allows you to define, you know, very, very easy to define the governance models and how you want to certify your data and all of that stuff. Um, so, so this is why it makes it very, very easy for you to create exchanges and listings with your uh, pop sub topics, then you can create subscribers on via Analytics Hub. And it's very, very useful because of some of these, uh, especially some of these tabs that shows you with clear transparency on who is doing what. This has been quite difficult in the past uh, and also with a lot of more permissions you need on you know, granting the downstream, the subscriber, the subscriber one. But right now you can do this via Analytics Hub so you don't have to actually manage this anywhere else, which is very important. Um, there's only one last thing, which is the uh, the thing I raised earlier on be careful with the subscriptions. So these subscriptions are unlike uh, the linked data set, they are infrastructure. If you create them and then you detach them, uh, by the way, if you detach them, it will show them as detached. So whenever you revoke it, uh, it will show them as detached, right? Um, but it is very important to understand if you if you do detach them, then the message would the consumers would no longer be getting the messages, right? So the topic could still be producing, but the consumer isn't getting anything. Once you reactivate it, you lose all of the messages in between because just that's how the topic works, right? So be very careful and uh, use version control and Terraform to create your infrastructure is what I would do. So you don't accidentally just you know do something in the UI that revoked your uh, subscription, which is which could be quite dangerous, right? That's the only thing I would like to point out, right? I think that's everything. So I'm quite excited about this feature because in the past, um, you know, I've seen teams run into this cross cutting concerns on not having visibility on exactly what the publisher uh, uh, have done. And then sometimes people re revoke certain service accounts, so the downstream subscribers did not know. Uh, and the funny thing is these things don't usually happen immediately because let's say the downstream team will need to make a change to their subscription. And that, at that point they realize, what the heck, we already lost the permission. So it could have a delayed impact as well. So with Analytics Hub, this should make this cross cutting concerns a lot easier to manage. Right, that's the end of today's uh, video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll see you next time. Go, go, go.